Welcome back to week five. In this and the next segment, we will focus on an issue which is highly debated within the online community. The so-called right to be forgotten or right to be de-indexed, widely criticized as an attack against freedom of expression. In this first segment, I will present the various court decisions and policy development related to the right to be de-indexed. In the next segment, I will present the various arguments from both sides of the debate and will conclude with general conclusions. One of the most recent and impactful events in global free speech jurisprudence over the last few years is the European Court of Justice decisions, Google Spain, the Agencia Española de Protección, of 2014, the so-called decision on the right to be forgotten, which has been more accurately described as the right to be de-indexed. Since then, courts around the world have rendered decisions on the right to be forgotten, some of which applied the law of the 2014 Gonzalez case at the European Court of Justice. So what do we mean by the right to be forgotten and how did courts determine that such a right exists? Let me first begin with that particular case uh, of 2014, the, the Gonzalez case in, um, in Spain. In uh, March 2010, Spanish citizen, Mr. Gonzalez, brought a complaint before the country's data protection agency against a newspaper, L'Advanguardia, against Google Spain and against Google Incorporated in the United States. Gonzalez wanted the newspaper to remove or alter the record of his 1998 court proceeding so that the information would no longer be available through internet search engine. He also requested Google Incorporated or its subsidiary in Spain, Google Spain, to remove or conceal the data. Gonzalez argued that the proceedings, the court proceedings of 1998, had been fully resolved for several years and therefore they should no longer appear online. The uh, Spanish Agency for uh, Data Protection dismissed the complaint against the newspaper on the ground that the publication was legally justified pursuant to a government order. It, however, upheld the complaint against Google, finding that internet search engines are also subject to data protection laws and must take necessary steps to protect personal information. On appeal, the National High Court of Spain stayed the proceedings and presented a number of questions to the European Court of Justice concerning the applicability of a European directive regarding protection of personal data to the internet search engine. And that's how the case ended up with the European Court of Justice. And in its decision, the ECJ established the following precedent. First of all, that a search engine collect, retrieve, organize, stores, and disclose personal information, all of which amount to processing of data. Second, that a search engine is a controller of the data it has processed. Thirdly, that the processing of such personal data is carried out in the context of the activities of Google Spain, as opposed to Google Incorporated. And that's where it becomes uh, important from our standpoint. I quote, if the data appear to be inadequate, irrelevant, or no longer relevant, or excessive in relation to the purpose for which they were processed, the information and links concerned in the list of results must be 
erased. And finally, the court ruled that the data subject may be capable of exercising his right to be forgotten against a search engine, but not against the publisher of a web page, in that case, the newspaper. The European Court of Justice also acknowledged a different treatment in case of data concerning an individual in the public eye, justifying a preponderant interest of the public in having access to the information when such a search is made. That ruling set the reference and the benchmark for the so-called right to be forgotten, that is, the right to have one's data erased from um, a web search through Google or similar search engines. That ruling has been referenced by courts around the world, in Switzerland, Canada, Israel, the United Kingdom, Mexico, the Netherlands, Argentina, Japan, to name a few. You can see on your screen the world journey undertaken by this particular decision, a pretty exceptional travel, actually. In one year, it has been referenced by some 20 courts around the world, a fairly exceptional uh, situation. But let's, let's return to the decision. A few months later, after that first decision, in November 2014, an independent European advisory body on data protection and privacy published guidelines in an effort to clarify the reach of the Gonzalez decision. Two key points about those guidelines may be highlighted. First, the European body offered immunity for the inter internal search engines operated by news organization. And that's, um, that's very much linked to the, uh, to the decisions. If you recall, the newspaper was not included in, in, the new, in, the, in the ECJ decision, only Google. The European body also targeted Google in the same way as the European court had done by impact of their massive reach, citing the intrusive, I quote, or perversive, I quote, effect of giants such as Google. Second, the European advisory body posited that de-indexing search result only from national domain, i.e. in this, this case, google.es or google.spain, as opposed to the global domains, google.com, was simply not enough. In practice, this means that to be effective, delisting, de-indexing, forgetting, should be effective on all relevant domains, including .com. I quoted here from that advisory body. The uh, European Court ruling and the follow-up European body advice have generated in-depth analysis and intense debate from internet commentators and free speech activists across the world. There are two issues in particular which have been and are still debated. First, one concerns the soundness of a delisting process and how it may impact on the right to information. Basically, is there such a right as the right to be forgotten and how does it conflict with the right to access information? And second, what is the reach of a decision when it is made? Is it just national? or can it be global? What is the implication of the extraterritorial reach of delisting decisions? The process is not over. A few months later, in May 2015, the uh, French Data Protection Agency, the CNIL, CNIL from the French acronym, citing the uh, Gonzalez decision and the European Court, uh, the European uh, Agency Advice, ordered Google to delist the relevant links on all domain names worldwide. That is everything on google.com and not 
just a nation-specific domain. In this case, it will be google.fr. The CNIL gave Google formal notice that it must carry out the requested worldwide delisting within 15 days. That was not the first time a French court had ordered for such a global uh, delisting. In September 2014, a Parisian court had already ordered Google to delist Link globally on the ground that, and I quote, Google does not make it impossible to connect from the French territory using the other country endings of the Google search engines, meaning when I travel to France, my home country, I can still access information by using google.com rather than google.fr, which is a very good thing. In response to um, the CNIL decisions regarding the uh, global delisting, Google announced that it will use geolocation signals to restrict access to the delisted URL on all Google search domain when accessed from the country of the person requ requesting the removal, and that it will apply the change retrospectively to all delisting that they have already done under the European court ruling. So here Google was uh, trying to find uh, a technical response to the French uh, data protection agency request, which uh, on the face of it sounded reasonable. But still, the uh, French data agency was not satisfied with a Google proposal and it is issued its uh, fine uh, the following month. So in May 2016, Google announced it will file an appeal against uh, the French decision and the case is is ongoing. The situation I am describing regarding the right to be delisted is not just a French-American or French Google issue, although uh, it's got to be seen as largely dominating the agenda, which is actually fair enough. But some of the arguments on the right to be forgotten uh, were also tested in Canada in a case decided in June 2015. And um, the court there kind of agreed with the French uh, positions, even though they are not referencing it. They ended up with the same conclusion. The Court of Appeals of British Columbia in Equitesque Solution v. Google upheld a previous lower court decision ordering Google to de-index certain websites selling goods that were the subject of intellectual property and unlawful appropriation of trade secret claims. Google had argued that the extraterritorial reach of the injunction was inappropriate and the violations of various principles and that the injunction should not have been granted because of its effect on freedom of speech. The Canadian court echoed the French and European view that an injunction or delisting limited only to the national jurisdiction would be ineffective. And I'm quoting here from the Canadian court decision. The plaintiff have established, in my view, that an order limited to the Google.ca, Canadian Google, search site would not be effective. I am satisfied that there was a basis here for giving the injunction worldwide effect. And of course, that was a judge from that Canadian case. So in, in conclusion, for, for this segment, we've had several court decisions backed by uh, at least a regional uh, advisory decisions, all of which use very similar language regarding the right to be delisted and regarding the extraterritorial dimension of the implementation of that right. I will turn in the next segment on the arguments for and against uh, such a right, but let me end here with just one uh, comment. It is a fact that we can notice 
um, some kind of judicial convergence across borders and an emerging and interactive global jurisprudence as far as delisting or the right to be forgotten is concerned. Thank you very much. <laughs>